Unschooling sounds great. You take away all of the school rules and you give your kids control of their daily life and their schedule. But what happens when your kid only wants to play on their device and they really have no other interests or passions in life, right? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing how you can get your kids away from their devices, give them more of real life experiences and help them to find those passions and interests. Welcome to the Homeschool with Beth Chats. Um, today, I'm so excited um, to be sharing with you all of my thoughts about how to um, help your child find their interests and passions. And today's episode is brought to you by my brand new Homeschoolers Essential Starter Guide. So if you are a brand new homeschooler, you've just pulled your kids out of school and you're like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I don't know what to do first. Well, in this guide, I tell you exactly the first few steps that you take to get started with homeschooling, all of the legal things and all the stuff that everybody has to do first. So if you are interested in the brand new Homeschoolers Essentials Guide, you can find that at my website, bethpavlik.com slash shop, and that will tell you everything that you need to know. All right. So also in the chat, just remember to put in there where you're homeschooling from and any other questions that you have during this time, and then we will get to them in the Q&A portion. All right. So today we're talking about how to homeschool your kids. You, you like to think about unschooling and you want to give them control, um, but then they only want to do what they want to do, which is not really formal learning, right? So I had um, this video on my channel, it's the unschooling video, and I made that in my first year of having this YouTube channel. And to this day, it has 22,000 views, which is crazy for my tiny little YouTube channel. Um, but I think that it just resonated with so many people that were pulling their children out of school because they were like, this is just not working for us. We need to do something else. And this video about totally taking all of the school rules out of it, no more tests, no more quizzes, no more workbooks, just real life stuff. It really people were so interested in it. And I've gotten the most comments on that video as well. And so I thought that I would take time today to really kind of debunk some misconceptions about what unschooling is. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, a lot of the people that we're talking about, um, you know, their, their misconceptions or their misunderstandings about it were saying like, but wait a minute, my kid only wants to play Minecraft. Like, how do I let them do that all day? Well, the first thing I want to tell you is unschooling does not mean that you stop parenting them. All right. So you're still in control. You still have the responsibility to parent your child and you still call the shots right? It does not mean that you just don't uh, have any control over them whatsoever, right? It's just like, how many kids in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, how many of them say, you know, I, I really want to brush my teeth twice a day, maybe three times a day. No, if my kids had the choice to brush their teeth or not, they probably wouldn't do it most days, right? But do I still make them do that as their parent? Absolutely, all right? So it's a balance. It is an absolute balance of knowing that your kid has to do certain things in life to learn how to be responsible, learn how to take care of themselves, learn how to be good to others, learn how to just be a responsible person, and you still have to teach them that, right? And then you also, on the other side of that, know that they are curious about things. They they do have the capability of, of choosing what they're interested in and what they love. And so we want to be able to give them that freedom to be able to pursue those things. But that doesn't mean that you give them all the freedom all day long, every day of the week, right? There's a balance between both. So that's that's one thing that I just wanted to clear up right there, that unschooling does not mean that you stop parenting them and stop making some decisions for them. OK, so now that we've got that out of the way, um, the second thing um, that I wanted to share was that we have to put aside what we think about how kids learn. 
based on how our school experience was, right? And how it still is today. So if you're pulling your child out of school right now, you might be thinking like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make the schedule just like the school has the schedule. And, and I have to make sure that they learn these specific subjects every single day. And we, you know, that's what we have to focus on all day long is the academic part of it, right? Well, Maria Montessori, who is one of my favorite homeschooling pioneers, um, she said this. She said, when the child is seen as an empty vessel into which one pours knowledge and then creates bonds, there is no need to involve the child actively in the learning process. Empty vessels are passive by nature, yet people learn best when they are actively engaged. All right. So we don't need to have our children have a constant intake of information from us to be able to learn. Right. They were made to figure things out themselves by participating actively. All right. So we are preparing our kids to be active thinkers. All right. What I love about about um, Maria Montessori's uh, quote here was that it's saying like, they, they don't just, they're not just born with like no ability to, to wonder about things and be curious and ask questions. Like they do have that ability to think for themselves. And it's not our job to just keep filling them with information. And then all of a sudden they know everything, right? They need to be actively participating in their learning. OK, I love that it's, you know, it's they're not empty vessels. They are active doers. All right. And we have to trust that about our kids. At the same time, I love this quote from John Holt. He's another homeschooling pioneer. He's an unschooling pioneer, honestly. And it says what children need is not better curricula, but better access to more and more of the real world. And that's really what it is. You might be thinking, if I can just find the perfect curriculum for my kids, then, then they're going to learn everything and be absolutely successful, right? But that's not really what they need because that's not real life. And if we really are trying to prepare our kids for real life and not just academics and getting them into college and all of that, then like we have to just give them access to real life. We want them to understand the real life situations that they're going to get into when they're older. We want to prepare them for that, all right? So you have to shift your focus. What is the actual goal of teaching our kids at home? It is not so that they know how to pass those tests. It is not that they are better than all of their peers in all of the academics, right? We just want them to be able to get out in the world and know how to do things and know how to interact with people, and know how to figure things out on their own. And we have to give them that empowerment that they can do this on their own without someone standing over them, feeding them that information all of the time, right? Because no one does that to us in real life. And so we don't want them to learn in that way either. All right. So we have to shift that focus. So um, we're not preparing our kids to pass great, you know, take tests, pass grades and get degrees. We're preparing them to be active thinkers. All right. And so we want them to learn in an environment where they care about things. They wonder about things. They ask good questions and they want to pursue answers to those. How often in traditional school are they able to do that? How often are they able to, you know, th think about a concept that was just introduced to them by their teacher and raise their hand and be able to give their opinion about it or take it off in the direction that they want to take it off in or ask their questions and then get answers to those questions? How often do they really get to do that in traditional school? Well, that's what we're trying to do in our homeschool. We want them to ask the good questions. We want them to care. We want them to pursue answers to those questions. So we, that's why we create that environment at home to do that, okay? So school is an environment where they can only be passive, obedient listeners, right? Completely passive, cannot ask their own questions or go off into their own tangents with those ideas. So um, it leads to no original thought, right? The teacher presents the lesson, the, the child intakes that lesson, and then they're supposed to remember it, memorize it, and take a test on it. 
That's that's how the learning in the school happens. But and everything in school is controlled by the teachers and the administration, never the children. All right. So we are giving them that freedom to take matters into their own hands most of the time. But how do we guide them to find their passions and their interests? How do we do that with unschooling? Well, there are three different ways that when you boil it all down, these are the three ways that we always learn things. Okay. The first thing is reading something, right? So, um, think about everything that you've ever learned in life. Like, did you read books on it? Did you read articles? Did you read newspapers? Did you read any, you know, blog posts? How did you learn about things? You read something, right? The second way is discussing something. So if I want to know about a certain topic and I know someone who is an expert in that or somebody that is in that field or, or anything like that, I will talk to other people and I will find out something new. Sometimes I'm not even asking questions. I just talk to other people, uh, you know, friends, uh, people that I see out in public and I talk to them and I learn new things. Right. So that's another way. The third way is experiencing something. OK, so really think about everything that you have ever learned in your life. It's because you either read it, you discussed it with someone else or you experienced it. OK, so those are the three ways that we learn. OK, so um, let's think about books. Whenever I want to learn something new, my first instinct is to go and find a book about it. Right. So or a few books about it, because I want different opinions about it as well. Um, whenever my kids have a question about something that I don't necessarily have the answer to, my first reaction is to say, let's go to the library and find a book about it. All right. Um, so if you pick out really good books with a variety of ideas um, that you can either read to your kids or you just bring them home from the library or you buy them and just have them around the house for your kids to look at at their leisure, then they will have lots of ideas to think about and want to discuss with you. All right. So getting books from the library, buying books, having reference books around your house, that is going to really open up your kids' ideas and and give them new concepts and topics to think about, all right? So that's the first thing. With discussions, we facilitate discussions after our kids have heard something that we've read to them or they've read something themselves, right? Or they've seen something. They can watch videos about something and all of a sudden they'll be like, huh, you know, I was thinking about that. I had a question. I wasn't really sure. That facilitates our discussion, right? Anytime I read to my kids, whether it is our homeschool curriculum or anything else that I read to them, it facilitates discussion. My kids automatically know that they can ask questions. They can tell me like, huh, this is what I think about that. Or I wonder if this, they are already programmed. I've already just had that environment in our homeschool that whenever I read them something, they are allowed to ask questions. They are allowed to take the conversation where they want it to go. All right. So discussions don't just come out of thin air. Right. We have to facilitate them by introducing topics to our kids. OK, um, we want discussions because it causes them to look at a topic or a problem and wonder out loud about solutions and ideas. We don't want them to be trained to be force fed opinions and answers. We want them to use their brains critically. All right. So if you think back to traditional school, right, they sit there, the teacher lectures and gives um, the topics and they give the, the opinions to the kids and the kids are just supposed to act passively take that in. All right. And that's it. That's that's all it takes. So we want our kids to be active thinkers and to use their brains critically and to have those discussions to be like, well, to me, that seems like something that we've learned about before, or I wonder why this is that way. We want them to be actively using their brains, right? And just not taking things at face value. Okay. The next thing is experiences. All right. So the best way to learn about the world is to actually get out into the world. And it's really as simple as that, right? So how do we do that? We take our kids on field trips. 
We take our kids on family vacations. We go out into our community and we go to events. Um, I can't tell you how many places in my community have specific programs and events just for homeschoolers during the week because they know that we'll go do it. You know, whether it's at a nature preserve, whether it's at the library having events, whether it's through our park district, like they know that homeschoolers will eat all of that stuff up because we know that learning is all about going and experiencing it, right? And so we go and we experience those things. So when I say field trips, I do not mean like traditional school field trips where the teacher might have different things that all the kids are supposed to learn after that field trip. You know, she's got a list. She might have a quiz afterwards, or she might make them write like a little paper about everything that they learned on the field trip. It is not like that at all. We go on our field trips for the fun of it. I do not quiz my kids afterwards. There is absolutely no criteria um, for the things that they need to learn when we are done with that field trip. It's just an experience that they will learn whatever they want to learn in that experience, right? Like I'm not dictating that. Um, so um, it's simply an experience that our kids will keep with them, right? They will remember those experiences more than anything else. So they can't know what they are interested in unless they know what's out there to be interested in, right? That's profound. I mean, if we really think about that for a second, it's like, how do you know what there is to learn about if you don't even know what's out there to learn about? Does that make sense? So like my daughter who is six loves safari animals. She didn't really know too much about lions and leopards and cheetahs and all those things that she loves until she, she watched the movie, The Lion King. That was not something educational that I was trying to put in front of her to learn about those animals. She just watched that movie because it's a Disney movie and we watch movies at our house. And all of a sudden she fell in love with safari animals. And so she was introduced to the topic and all of a sudden she realized this is my passion. I love these animals. And so what have we done to facilitate that? Um, we have given her, she has a bunch of safari stuffed animals that she plays with. She's got little figures of all of these safari animals that she plays with. She reads lots of books from the library. She chooses these books on her own about lions, tigers, cheetahs, leopards. She has written her own stories about those animals. It's just her passion. And the only way that she knew about it was because I exposed her to the Lion King and then she loved it, right? So you need to expose your kids to a little bit of everything in the world so that they will find their passion and interest, okay? So the bottom line is, I want my kids to understand through our homeschooling how to learn, not just what to learn. I want them to graduate from our homeschool time knowing that if there is anything that they want to learn about or have to learn about in their future, then they know how to learn it. When I decided to homeschool my first child, the first thing I did was I talked to an, a more experienced homeschooler because I wanted to find out everything that I could from a person who had already done it. But the second thing that I did was I went to the library and I found all the books about homeschooling that I could find because I wanted to know how does homeschooling work? I didn't know anything about homeschooling whatsoever when I decided to do it, but I read all these books and I found out about the teaching methods and the different teaching philosophies and learning styles. And I found out just like like what this is all about. I educated myself on that topic by reading books and then having discussions with other people, right? And then I experienced it by just jumping in and getting started with it. So um, I started reading blogs by homeschoolers as well because I really wanted that firsthand experience from real people that were going through it. And that's how I learned about it. Um, also, in my um, virtual homeschool community, my um, Intentional Homeschoolers uh, membership, um, I don't just tell these new homeschoolers how I think homeschooling should look like because I'm not an expert. 
I know a lot about homeschooling and I do it, but I don't know everything. And so what we do is we read good books from people who have studied this, who have lived through this and have studied children and have spent years of their lives observing and and learning and and studying and writing books about homeschooling. And so when we read books about it, it really just opens our eyes to, you know, because I think that we can get so easily sucked back into that homeschool or the uh, the traditional school um way of teaching our kids. And so when you read good books about how kids learn best and how we can um guide them and and give the give them resources, then it's going to help our homeschool that much more. So if you are interested in joining my Intentional Homeschoolers membership, it is right here. You can go to my website and check that out. Um, So that is the, that is the teaching portion of this live. Um, What I have for you at the end of this, and then we'll get into the Q&A, is I have this homeschool outings free resource for you. And so what this is, is if you are looking for experiences with your child or with your children, then you might just be like, I don't even know where to take them. I don't know where we should go on a field trip. I don't know. I mean, we go to the library, but what else should we do? I have a whole list for you completely free for you to grab off of my website. And this has indoor activities. It has outdoor activities. It has lists of museums. It has a um, list of uh, just community events that you could go to. Um, you just have to think outside the box of where you could go and experience things with your kids. And so I wanted to help you out with that um, to just get out of the house, get away from the workbooks, get away from those devices and really have good meaningful and memorable experiences with your kids. So um, you can absolutely go to this link and I'll also have it down in the description um, afterwards so that you can go and get your free resource. All right. So now we are going to get into the Q&A portion of this live. So I'm going to go ahead and look at uh, our comments now. So Ginger says, hello from Illinois. Uh, thanks for all the info and homeschooling. You're such a big help. Love your videos. Definitely appreciate all your insight. Well, thank you so much, Ginger. I am so glad that you hopped on to this live with me today and that you got value out of it. Thank you so much. And Laura says, so helpful. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Um, here's something else that I wanted to bring up. So like, like I said, with my unschooling video, um, a lot of people had the same exact question. And that's why I titled this, what to do when your kid only wants to play on their device. And so just to recap, what I taught was that you still have the responsibility to make sure that your kid's screen time is limited. However, don't don't misjudge them getting screen time. I mean, that is that is our future. Lots of people use screen time and it's totally fine, but we have to limit it, right? So like I have screen time, I don't play video games, but I get on my devices and I'm on my social media and it's not something that I am on all day long. And so if we just give our kids that chance to do something that they find fun and entertaining, that's it's really not bad. Um, but just limit it. I, my kids are on devices, but they are also limited. Um, and then the other thing is just making sure that when we are unschooling, we are not just giving them all of the control and letting them run the show and letting them just sit and be on their devices all day. Um, but also not necessarily using, um, a strict schedule and chosen curriculum for them and like setting up their whole day for them. So what we are doing is knowing that you can learn without the curriculum. You can learn without having the strict schedule. All right. Remember the three most uh, effective ways of learning is through reading something, discussing something and experiencing something. And those things are going to get us where we need to go in life. So this person, um, I wrote down some of the comments on that unschooling video on my channel. Um, Somebody said, I don't think unschooling is for my kid because it's not structured enough. My nine-year-old just can't wait to get his schoolwork done so that he gets his technology time. Uh, All he wants to do is talk about what he created or what he will create tomorrow. He doesn't really want to learn anything unless it's about Minecraft or Nerf Wars. There's no wanting to learn life skills right now with my nine-year-old son. 
And I want to tell you that that's okay. Like I have a nine-year-old son right now who happily does his work, but his work does not take all day. And then, yeah, he's excited to go play his games. And can I tell you that when I am upstairs folding laundry or something, my nine-year-old son will come up and he'll say, hey, mom, can I tell you what I did today? And his biggest game is he loves Angry Birds. So he'll play Angry Birds on his device. And he will tell me all of the gems that he got. He'll tell me about the new birds that he got and the the, the yellow stars and the hats. And I don't understand any of it. But he will literally sit there and talk with me for about 30 minutes straight. And I just, I just listen to him. All right. And I, I feel like we so easily just look at that game time and say, that's not valuable. That is such a waste of time. And listen to me. I don't love video games. I don't love that my kids play video games, to be honest with you. But you know, right now, life has gotten shifted and, and just kind of, uh, re, uh, it's just changed. And, and right now we're spending a lot more time at home, not getting to go out and do our experiences like we want. And so, yes, my kids are playing video games right now, limited, but they're still playing it, but there's nothing wrong with him wanting to play that and, and doing something that he enjoys. And I think that having those discussions with them or just listening to them, share with you what is important to them it's so powerful to just sit there and listen to them and let them share what they enjoy. All right. We want that, that relationship with our kids that they know that they can come and share with us about anything. And we're not going to dismiss it as something that's unimportant because it's important to them. Right. So we want to have those discussions with them. I will sit and listen to him talk all day long about what he finds exciting and, and that's all he wants me to do. He just wants to be able to share it with me. So Ginger says, my oldest is in ninth grade and he thrives on structure, but we let him pick what he wants to learn. So he picks his own curriculum and subjects. Yeah. And I mean, I have a friend who her 11 year old son is very, wants a lot of structure and she is not necessarily into a lot of structure. She likes to just kind of, she's like me. She likes to go with the flow in the day and see what happens and see how we, we get through some other things um, and then get through our schoolwork and all of that. And they crave more structure. So what she did was, you know, she's still, she kind of lets them lead. Like they have curriculum and her son really wants to get through the curriculum and he wants to do it the exact right way. And like, um, one night she said that he was up until 10 o'clock writing a paper and she was like, you know, buddy, it's okay if we just work on this tomorrow. And he was like, no, I have to get my paper done today. And he's just so driven on his own, you know? And so you definitely, if your kid wants more structure, give them the structure that they want. It's totally fine to do that. We're still working with what our kids want to do, right? Now, my kids are more like me. They're they're very laid back like I am. And, um, and we get work done, but we also just spend a lot of time doing things that we find enjoyable. And so you have to just work with your kid. If they want to be more structured, give them more structure. That's totally fine. And Laura says, you can learn so much from Minecraft too. I absolutely agree. I have a, a I had a student um, when I was teaching online um, that loved Minecraft and he wants to be an architect when he grows up. And so him building in that is so helpful. And it's, it's so creative. I feel like none of my kids do Minecraft, but I've totally thought that about that game that like, it is not just nonsense. Um, now, some games are definitely um, more productive than others. I will say that. And so I also um, monitor what games they play. So Ginger said, yes, his Minecraft. Our other two boys have build-offs. They create art projects on Minecraft pertaining to what they're learning. And see, and so this is the exact reason why we cannot just write off video games, especially these that make our kids have a creative outlet, right? So we should not just say, you know what? All video games are just a waste of time and so silly and so unproductive. It's just not true. And if our kids love it and they make things that they are proud of, then why would we say that that's a waste of time? Yeah, I totally agree with you guys. Um, so, and my kids play games and they, you know, they enjoy it. It's fine. You know, it's just like watching TV. I think watching 
TV all day long is absolutely unproductive and a waste of time. But do I let my kids watch it sometimes a little bit of the time during the day? Absolutely. Especially on cold days when we have nothing else to do. Right. Um, somebody else had said, um, my husband thinks that we aren't learning anything. It's easy to get caught up in doing other things around the house, like cleaning. And what I have to say about that is that, listen, we want our kids to see what real life is like, right? So those everyday things that you're talking about, like cleaning the house, doing laundry, cooking, cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathrooms, we want our kids to be exposed to that. We want them to know that that's real life. Real life is not just sitting at a desk, filling out worksheets all day, and then getting to go play. That's not what real life is about. Real life is about being responsible, taking care of your house, taking care of yourself, all of that. And so I love that my kids see and participate in keeping our house clean, me and, and their dad cooking, um, unloading and loading the dishwasher. They are a part of that. They are a part of doing their own laundry, putting it in a washing machine, taking it out of the dryer, folding it, putting it away. They have, they, they see that that is a part of life and that those things are important. So <laughs> they're going to see real life and that's okay, right? We're not putting on our teacher hats when we're homeschooling our kids. And then, you know, at the end of the day at three o'clock, all of a sudden we can be their mom again and do normal things. No, it's all a part of normal life. So don't be afraid of that. Laura says, we also love Lego, similar idea. We don't play with other people, just their own worlds themselves for the time being. Oh, absolutely. So my kids definitely have, well, really only my nine-year-old. He's the only one that loves Lego still. Um, but he has some Lego games that he plays on our, on our PS4, I believe. Um, like, yeah, it's just like those little worlds and like they play and they get the, I think that it's amazing. I think it's so creative. So I love all. All of the games and learn from fun stuff, right? So some of the um, experiences that I have on that free resource for you are like going to different museums, going to different parks, going to different um, like live performances at a theater, like going to see a play or going to see, um, we have gone to the symphony orchestra um, years ago because we haven't gone recently, um, but we went like three years in a row because our homeschool community got discounted tickets because we all, all of us homeschoolers went as a large group. And so we got discount tickets and we got to go see the symphony orchestra in the spring. It was always like in April. So it was kind of like at the end of our school year, we kind of celebrated, but going to see the symphony, symphony orchestra. There's also um, a kids theater in our area. So like there is a group that like puts on plays and it's all these, these kid actors. And like, I, I've never taken my kids to one of those performances, but I would love to take them at least once so that they can just experience that. Um, I've taken to the orchestra. We also went for other like just cultural um, shows that they put on at this community um, theater for us. And so just my kids may not be into theater. They may not be into musicals or, you know, live performances, but at least they're going to experience it once. And I think that that is important. Um, the other things are like going ice skating with your kids, going roller skating, um, going to state parks or national parks and hiking places and, and all of those things. We love going to our library. We do it weekly, but we also love going to the bookstore. We may not buy books at the bookstore, but we like to browse there and see all of the new books, um, all of those things. And a bunch of field trips that you could um, either go by yourself or organize with other homeschool families are like um, – taking a uh, police station tour, going to the fire station and meeting the fire, uh, fire people, firemen. Um, uh, what else? Uh, going to the, the bank on a tour, um, going to the post office and getting a tour. Um, there is a locally owned donut shop that we absolutely love as a family. And it's the only place that we get our donuts. And um, they're locally owned. There's just one store and then they have a donut truck. And we go there probably once a month and get donuts. And I thought it would be so exciting um, to take my kids on a tour if they would let us come and let it, let them see like how they make the donuts and, and the whole process. And like, if they could like make their own donuts and like take them home, I think that would be such a fun experience. It is not educational at all, except to see how things work, 
You know, I love the idea of factory tours, um, seeing how things are made and seeing all the big machines and all the things that it takes to make something and produce it and package it and all of that. I think that is such a wonderful experience for kids. And I've also mentioned in the past how my daughter thinks that she might want to be a veterinarian um, when she gets older. And so I thought that it would be an amazing experience for her if I took her to a vet clinic and they like showed her around, showed her how they take care of the animals, show her how they, where they store the medicine and the different procedures they might do and like all of that and like have her be like a little mini um, veterinarian for the day. I just thought that would be such an amazing thing too. Like just showing them the real world, showing them the possibilities, showing them how things work and, and what people do for their job is so, so good. Laura says, excited for the summer when I feel safer going to museum or science centers. I absolutely agree. I feel like spring and summer are going to be so, so good. I'm just crossing my fingers that they will be. Um, we'll see. But yeah, I've got a whole list of places that I want to go. The places that I want to go are definitely um, some hiking places that um, we have not gone to uh, recently that um, have been on my list forever and I just haven't taken them to them. And so I'm like, oh, this might be a little drive. Let's go to this state park and um, let's go to this national park. Let's go to this hiking place. I want to hit all of those places because um, we've gone to a lot of other places uh, a couple of times and we're kind of sick of them. Um, the ones that are really close by that are like 15 minutes uh, driving distance. So I think that is about it. Unless anyone has any questions, um, I will let you all get back to whatever you're doing on this Friday. And I just wanted to say also, happy last Friday of January. We just have a few more days and then we can put January behind us. Um, it makes me so happy to just move on. I am a summer girl through and through, and I just don't like the winter whatsoever. Um, Ginger says, one issue I have is that my youngest is that he wants to do school so he can get done and can play video games. So he likes structure, but I want him to have a love of learning. Right. So to gain that love of learning, you have to make him see that learning doesn't just come from the curriculum. Learning actually comes from reading good books going out and doing field trips, having those discussions, right? And also having curriculum that um, as well as you can um, connects to real life, right? So like our science curriculum, we're learning about chemistry and physics in elementary school, but it's absolutely giving us examples about those things in our real life. So it's connecting it to real life. And then we do hands-on projects that show the concepts that we're learning about. And so that's how I get my kids excited about it. Um, my other, my oldest son really loves geography. And so with our classical conversations curriculum, we do map tracing and that is something that he loves to do. Um, and so he is interested in that. And so making it not just about memorizing things for school, just so he can show you that he knows it so that he can move on, right? Like you want them to be excited about what they are learning about. So the love of learning really comes from, okay, show me what you're interested in. Now let's learn more about that. And I'm going to give you resources that you can use to learn more about that, right? And then letting them know that like having discussions about any topic or any subject that you are learning about in school um, to make it more interesting, right? So like anytime they have a question when you're sitting there reading a history lesson or you're sitting there trying to get through a reading lesson with them, like if they have something they want to talk about or bring up or have a question about that, then like letting them have those questions and those thoughts and having a discussion with them about it might make it a lot more interesting and meaningful to him. So I hope that that was helpful. She said, he likes the curriculum we're using, but I want to switch to more Montessori. I absolutely hear you. Montessori is amazing. I really, really love that. And I really like that Montessori is very hands-on. It is giving the kids um, a lot of the freedom to use the tools by themselves and discover things about it themselves. Um, so yeah, I think that Montessori is amazing. I love it. I've got some videos about that on my channel as well. Um, yeah. So I hope that that was helpful to you. Uh, love those ideas. Thanks. You're welcome. 
All right, guys, I am going to let you go. Thank you so much for showing up with me today. I hope that you got value out of this. And if you did, you can like the, the live after we're done. Um, and you can also um, share this with anybody that you think it would be uh, helpful to. And I will see you next time.